For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And in response to a woman who thinks that the Bible preaching is of Satan, I'm going to open the Bible to Mark chapter 16, verse 15, in the words of Jesus Christ himself. Go ye all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. One must remember that the Sermon on the Mount was not preached in a church. It was preached outdoors. Let me give you a clue. The Sermon on the Mount. There was a sermon brought to you by Jesus in a boat, Mark chapter 4, to the beach. Anywhere and everywhere where ears are applicable of hearing about Jesus Christ is God approved. We have in the world today all kinds of sound. We have impossible devilish music coming from the cars all around America. We've got great things as someone hitting a ball, a bunch of left hand turns. We got radio boom boxes. Why not lift up Jesus Christ, the blessed hope? Why not have the word of God preached? Jesus said in Mark 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel. From the pages of the book of Acts, you find the apostles preaching on the streets. The apostle Paul went up to Mars Hill and preached about a devilish, wicked assembly of people under a false god and reproved them in the name of Jesus Christ and the salvation of Jesus Christ. It is God ordained of men to preach the gospel, Romans chapter 10. Salvation is set forth by preaching. You're not going to have an angel come and speak to you. Your angel ain't going to show up in your toast. It's not going to be in a limb of a tree, but it's going to be out of the mouth of a man to preach. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Now if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. That's what I'm doing right now, with my mouth. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, I am just confessing. Jesus Christ is my Lord, God, and Savior, and He's able to be yours. And if He is your Savior, step out. Do what the Bible tells you to do to proclaim Him. Thou shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised Him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him should not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel to proclaim here with an amplification, with a voice, to say to you that Jesus Christ is my Savior. Jesus Christ is my blessed hope. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I don't see you up here standing up for your alcohol. I don't see you standing up here for sex. I don't stand, see you standing up here for anything but like Jesus Christ. I stand up and I proclaim He's the Savior. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's worthy to be talked about. That's worthy to be amplified. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. 
For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now here we go. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Then how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Mark 16, Jesus says, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 says, How are you going to hear the gospel if there are no preachers? I guarantee most of you all are not going to be in the church Sunday morning tomorrow. And those that are in a church, I guarantee that that church is not of God and is not right according to the Scriptures. Let me give you an idea. One church says Jesus Christ is not God. That's a false religion called Jehovahism. Jehovah Witnesses do not believe Jesus is God. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God. The Catholics say, you are to eat and drink the literal Jesus. I call you a cannibal. The Bible says you must receive Jesus by faith, not orally. And if you enter into an institution where Mary is a head of God and Jesus Christ, that is against the Bible. For there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You may go to church, you may go to a church that's anti-Bible. Especially in the days of America today. Because of those false teachings, because of those money-hungry people on the radio or on the television. When the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. And yet on the streets, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, again, verse 14, How shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Well, let me tell you something, people. According to what I just read to you out of Romans chapter 10, you may not like the preaching, but God says, I love it. Because it proclaims Jesus Christ. It don't proclaim a, a sports enmity. It does not lift up a politician. It does not praise an actor, actress, or singstress, or singster. It glorifies the Son, Jesus Christ. And God says, I love them feet. But the Bible also says in Romans chapter 10, verse 16, I have read you that out of the heart man believes in righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I have read to you out of Romans chapter 10, the preacher. I also read to you Daytona Beach, Florida, 2019. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. That's why we're here week after week after week, to proclaim the gospel that you might be able It's God's long-suffering. It is the love of God that the preacher goes and preaches. That you might obtain the words of life. And then words are the words of Jesus Christ. Then words are Jesus Christ. Rome, uh, John chapter 1, verse 1. It's a simple fact that Jesus saves. You might ask, what does he save from? The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. 
and let it be known that it is a great privilege in America of a constitution that you can preach Jesus whether you like it or not. It is the way of God. It is the love of God. That Jesus Christ is willing to save your soul that Jesus Christ wants his gospel to preach. Romans chapter 10. Again, Bible, open Bible. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. It may not be beautiful to you, but the preaching of Jesus Christ is lovely to God. The only thing that matters to God is His Son. And when we get to glory by the shed, finished work of the blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross, when we all get to heaven, it will be about the one that suffered and died. It will be the Son of God, who is God. God manifested in the flesh, 100% God, 100% man. That is the one you're to put your faith and trust in. The finished testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ. God sent forth his love that he was born in that manger in Bethlehem and he grew up and died upon the cross of Calvary. And upon the cross they took him down, they they, they killed them according to the scriptures. And they took him and they buried him. And the finished work was three days and three nights later that he arose from the grave victorious over sin and death. And you have the nerve to hold God's plants where life began in the garden of Adam and Eve, planted by God himself. And you have the nerve to reject the preach of Jesus Christ. One day, your complaint may go to the authorities, but you'll stand before the God that's being preached. And there is no other answer. There is no other way but that of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Rest assured there is a God. Rest assured that Jesus Christ is that blessed hope. For the scripture said, death is coming. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. John chapter 1. Twice. Twice in the Gospel of John chapter 1, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Religion can't do it. Denience of God can't do it. A science can't do it. Education comes up short. For all have sinned. And since all have sinned, and the wages of sin is death, we're all going to die. At some point in our life, we are born to die. There will be a birthday has been recorded. There is a death date yet to come for us. And yet the Bible says between your birth and your death, you need a new birth. Jesus said in John 3.3, 3, ye must be born again. Because all have sinned. 
You are born in the nature of Adam. You rebel against God. You reject God. You don't want to have anything to do with God. You think God is of the devil. And with your rejection of Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will be cast off into hell for all eternity. Listen, adultery does not get you into hell. The fact is that Jesus Christ suffered and died for our sins. We are sinners. If we are not washed of our sins by the Lamb of God, without the blood of Jesus Christ, that sin will cast you into hell for all eternity. And the Bible says many, many will go that broad way that lead us to destruction. And John has recorded that he that has the Son has everlasting life. And he that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And the wrath of God is hell. And when you dislike hatred for the gospel being preached on the city of America, you do not know your history. Because great men like George Whitfield preach on the streets of America. A famed ball player, Billy Sunday, left the baseball and preached on the streets throughout America. It was called the Great Awakening. It was upon the street corners. It was in the open fields. It was in the factories of New England where the gospel was, being, was preached as it's being preached today, except one thing. Today you're rejecting. Today you hate God. And when you hate the preaching of Jesus Christ, you hate God. I told you, Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. He never told you literally to eat himself. He never told you to put a happy face on and dance with a big fat rat. He told you to carry your cross. He told you to believe on Him. He never told you to join a religion. He never dabbled in the science. He was never involved in the education. But the fact is that Jesus saves and Jesus can save your soul. And your soul needs saving. That's why there is Jesus. That's why there is the preaching of the gospel. The wages of sin is death. All have sinned. You're going to die. If you die without Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. And hell is so vile. Hell is such a destructive place that the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He, came, that he gave His only begotten Son. God saw your state going to hell. He says, i got to give you Jesus. Because you can't do it yourself. There's no way. If you can save yourself, why do you have Jesus? Listen, your education system, your politics have not helped. It's only gotten worse in America. There was a time when the Bible was preached in the schools and taught that there was respect. There is no respect today. There is no peace and safely today. And yet the Bible says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. 
Why is America in the state that she is in today? It's because you are wicked and they had said to God, we don't want you. Shut Jesus Christ up. Get rid of that preaching. And you're not going to get peace. And you're not going to get hope. For the Bible is the blessed hope. Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. You're not going to get the love. For God is love and you've got the wrong God. No one without the love of Jesus Christ and the testimony of Jesus Christ has no idea what love is. Because you can't know what you cannot know of God. You've got an estranged God that is not recognized in the gates of heaven. Because there's only one that the angels recognize. There's only one that God honors. And you see, religion is man-made, but Jesus Christ is God-approved. Throughout the scriptures, it is the life of Jesus or it's the wrath of God, anything or nothing. Atheism will get you in the same hell as Catholic. You can be a Baptist, and you can be a charitable person in hell. Your entrance into heaven is by the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. There is no other name. That name is Jesus Christ. That salvation. The God of our fathers, Peter speaking, raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering. And without Jesus Christ, you don't have them fruit. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to indwell in an unholy body. I have love in my religion. No, you don't. You've got a lie from the liar, Satan. The world needs more love. No, it needs for you to believe on the Jesus Christ that suffered and died, was buried, and arose again to come out of the world. The world is going to hell. The broad way. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. But straight is the gate that leadeth to life. And that life and that gate is through Jesus Christ alone. Only. Nothing else. You cannot wish God away. You cannot hope God away. Titus 2.13 says, Jesus is 
the blessed hope. Any other hope is unholy. I hope my priest. Your priest ain't going to do nothing because Judas went to the priest and he died and the Bible says he is in his own place in hell. Didn't do him too good. When it comes to religion, Baptist, Catholic, whatever, you are in the same family as Judas Iscariot. Religion gets you a free ticket to hell. You earned it. But the wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans. John 1. Behold the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. In order to get out of hell, you need to be washed. And you and no other man can wash you but the man Christ Jesus. You want a sinner to wash a sinner. Be like me saying, well, here's a bucket of mud to wash your car. It's nonsense and it's foolish. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there's no God. In the eyes of God, atheism is a fool. And when you reject Jesus Christ, you are saying there is no God, for Jesus is God. Thomas said, my Lord, my God, you become the fool. You may be a religious fool. You may be a scientific fool. You might be an educated fool. But if you will not acknowledge Jesus Christ as God, Jesus Christ as Savior, you are not acknowledging Jesus Christ and you are not saved. The question is, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.30 and 31. And I've got the Bible right here. If you want, I'll help you open the passages. It can be seen. In the glorious pages of the Bible, there is hope. And that hope is in Jesus. There is no hope in the Pope. He's going to hell just as quick as you will. And according to the Bible, have more degree of hell than his congregations. Because he ought to know better. Imagine a man that can travel the world over and about and go to great men of the world and not preach Jesus Christ. And yet, in a place of Daytona Beach, a man speaks up about Jesus and proclaims Jesus without the fanfare of that dope. I have an orange for you. You like one? Oh, thank you. We're into being kind, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have to enjoy. Ooh, that's a nice, okay. good one. Yeah, navel. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's a matter of grace. God's grace saves. Let me read to you about Satan. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, 
Do you know some of your daddy is the devil according to the scripture? John 8, 44 says, Ye are of your father the devil. Many of you have Satan as your father. Great family. I'm born of God through Jesus Christ. My name is settled in Lamb's book of life. My God is my Father through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And the lust of your Father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there's no truth in him When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And many people are going to get up Sunday morning and they're going to listen to that liar lie to him. Oh, you're such a wonderful, great congregation. God is so thankful you are here today. We're all great. We're all... That's, I can't even say anymore. It's a bunch of garbage. All have sinned, and all have come short of the glory of God. And outside of Jesus Christ, you will die and go to hell. Let's hear your preacher say that tomorrow morning. I dare your preacher tomorrow to preach about hell. I dare him. This one I have to find, but I don't know if I'll be able to find it, so let me check. Let me look real quick. I get the Corinthians mixed up. It's two Corinthians. I don't know it all. Don't you ever, ever think that I know it all, because I don't. I'm looking up something. No, I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh well, anyway, Jesus saves. That's worthy to be preached. Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. There is no other salvation. The fact is, without Jesus Christ, you go to hell. With Jesus Christ, you go to glory. There's nothing else but Jesus Christ. There's nothing else to be preached about but Jesus Christ. If there's anything that is sure in life, it's death. You may not live to April 15th for taxes. I don't know. I don't have the power of the spirits to know life and death. But I know death is coming. And if you will put your faith in your trust 
alone in the finished work of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you die, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. As a Baptist, I can't say that. Hi, I'm a Baptist. I'm going to heaven. That don't work. There are no Baptists in heaven. It is by the finished merit of Jesus Christ you get to heaven. And the books were open. And the Lamb's book of life was open. And if your name is not found in the registry of the Lamb's book of life, there is no life for you. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. If you die in religion, you have no hope. You are hopeless. If you die in education, you are lifeless. And if you die in politics, you're stupid. You are so stupid to trust a man and not the man Christ Jesus. And I say that without apology. I have to use the word stupid every day. I have to at least once say something that's stupid. I would not be right if I didn't use the word stupid. And you will be stupid to die without the gospel of Jesus Christ by hearing it preached to you for 45 minutes every week. Now the Bible says fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And when you reject Jesus Christ, you're saying there's no God. Because Jesus is God. Now, Jesus is not a Catholic God. He's not a Baptist God. He's not a Presbyterian God. He's not a NASA God. He's not a football God. He is God of all gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is not Republican and he's not Democrat. He's the Lord God Savior of all light. And all men, in order to be saved and right with God, must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Donald Trump can't say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Your actors and actresses cannot say they are the way to God. Only Jesus Christ in the pages of the Bible, John chapter 14. I, Jesus speaking, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And why must you be subject to the gospel? Preaching. Jesus said, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Paul says the feet of the people that preach the gospel are lovely. God enjoys Jesus Christ being exalted. No, not one. So forget it. You can't get to God 
without the righteous one, Jesus Christ. You are not going to heaven when you have rejected Jesus Christ who said He is the way. You have no father if you have rejected the Son. You have no hope from the blessed hope in a religion. Listen, I'm of, if you say I'm of Catholic, Catholics have killed Christians. So you're going to be part of an organization that killed Christians and say God approves. I, I, I find you foolish. The Bible says the blessed hope is Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13. Oh, there's hope in the world, but it's temporal. It may get too costly for you. Maybe your hope is in a government job that you don't have today. Thank you all hail to the, to the President of the United States for no job. But thank you to Lord Jesus Christ, my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, my hope is in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life because you are the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, if I were to die right now, I'd be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, I've got a place settled for all eternity. Thank you, Lord Jesus, I know where I'm going when I die. These things have I written unto you, First John, that you may know you have eternal life. Religion cannot give you that satisfaction. You may not know where you go when you die in religion. But I do know if you die without Jesus, you will go to hell. Do not pass go, do not collect anything. You can't take it with you. There are no good merits upon your death. Only the merit that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the scriptures, of course, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. It's that simple. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What are you going to do then? The day when you stand before Jesus, rejecting Jesus in the gospel. When you stand before the Jesus that's preached. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And when you tell Jesus, I hated that preacher. I hated his message. I hate you, Jesus. Jesus will say, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. That man, what he preached, I love. Out of the Bible, of course. You want more love? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
That's love. I'll tell you what love is not. When a man or woman gets in a pulpit and makes you feel good. That's not love. That's John 8, 44, your father, the liar, the lustful, the deceiver, Satan. And you can find his churches anywhere in the yellow pages. I'll tell you where you, found, where you find Christians. In the Lamb's Book of Life, forever settled. Man, good to see you. Good to see you. Always out here. No matter what happens, I'm glad to see you here. You hear that woman came when we first came up? You know, you know what Jesus said to you? You're the devil. I, yeah. said, I, I said, woman, go read your Bible. Yes. And then I preached, you know, how Jesus, the, the, wait a minute, hold on. Jesus, the sermon of the mount. Right. That was not in the church. That was on the mountain. <laughs> I love it. When he said, Peter, get the boat. That wasn't in the church. That was on the water preaching to people. And then, I yeah. love so I tell them that. So when they say, that's not what Jesus would do, or, you know, I say, listen, I just come up. You're not a Bible. That's right. You have never been to the book of Acts. Paul preached on Mars Hill. There was no church. More, more, uh, more people just sit here and share and listen to you okay. rather than reject you. We are in the last days, I'm telling you. Amen, brother. Everything about the Bible, reject. We see it. Good to see you, sir. Isaiah. By the way, if you want to know why we preach, I got a pamphlet here. If you, if you dare cross the street, I'll give you one. I just lost my page. I can tell you why we preach on the street. Going all the world and preach the gospel. In a nutshell. To a bunch of nuts who will not believe on Jesus Christ. Nutty, stupid. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. How's that? That's God saying, come on, get out of that world and step out in front of me. I have something else here. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. Ah, here it is. I have to take this out now again, I guess. It is great that a preacher will use cue cards and notes to preach. I would hate to get it wrong. But Isaiah 58, 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions. You are sinners. Sinners need the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous including you all need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Lift up your voice. Oh, look! He made 500 left hand turns. Whoopee boo boo. He hit a home run. So what? Jesus saved. Hey, shut up. No want to hear that. No want to hear about Jesus. How come Jesus is hated and that other worldly junk is loved? How come? Because you all are sinners. 
There is none righteous. There is none that thirsts after God. Oh, I want God, but I don't want the preacher preaching. Something wrong with your heart. Something wrong with your eternal destination. Because one that would be going to heaven would love the gospel being preached out of the Bible. King James. Throw more wood on the fire. Are you thirsty? Jesus said, I am the water of life. He said that to an adulterous woman. <gasps> there is no sin too wicked that you can't come to the Lord. Behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. And upon that cross, Jesus took that cup of all sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's you. That's me. I'm a saved sinner saved by grace. With my name in the Lamb's book of life by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures what are you going to do to top that to get to heaven God in the face of your son Jesus look at my tithing record ho, 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 ho. really you think your pocketbook is going to save you? It can't even get you out of debt from Black Friday last month, two months ago. If you can't afford to pay your bills, you think your tithe is going to get you into heaven? Can I call you foolish by the Bible or can I call you stupid? I like the word stupid. But I love the name Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. The blessed hope. The glorious hope. God manifested in the flesh. God himself. And God, in Isaiah 1.13 says, come now. Come on out. We've got a Bible. We will show you what the Bible says. But I'm not going to come to you. You've got to come to God. You've got to come to God, the sinner that you are. God does not take pride and proud. God will not take foolishness. He will not take scorning. If I shall open up another page in the Bible. Imagine opening the Bible to preach. King James. Whoa. Can't believe that guy has an open Bible over there. My preacher don't have a Bible. He has a missile. Ooh. Missiles kill. We have a new world translation. Well, the world's going to hell. The NIV. You mean the nutty international version? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cries without. From the Bible, it's wisdom. She utters her voice in the streets. See, here's the street. She cries in the chief place of concourse, farmer's market, in the openings of the gates. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day now. She cries in the chief place of concourse, 
In the openings of the gate, she, in the city, she utters her voice saying, turn the page. It's so hard on a windy day. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Our oh, life is so great, it's so wonderful, it's so, oh, oh what's that guy preaching? Oh, it's so, there's no God, there's no devil, there's no hell. <laughs> and ye scorners delight in scorning. You're of the devil. If Jesus came here today, you'd be of the devil. That's not what God would do. Shut up. Go home. Get away from us. Close that Bible. You fool. And fools hate knowledge. I don't want to listen. You want to listen. Shut up. Don't want to hear anymore about that Jesus. Go home. Bring him to the church house. Daytona Beach, you are in the pages of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. In a Bible that's written 1611. Here you nuts are. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon unto you. I will make my word I will make known my words unto you. What did Romans 10 say? How shall they hear? How shall they know unless a preacher? How wonderful is the one that preaches the gospel? I ain't preaching prosperity. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it may not heal your cancer. It may make it worse. You're not going to find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow if you get saved. You may not find a pot. But you will get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Because I have called. That's God has called. Ye refuse. I stretched out my hand and no man regarded it. Hello, Daytona Beach, Florida. Hello. God is calling. He's got your phone number. You just got your stupid phone to your ear. Or whatever they do with them today. You cannot text God. The number you must call to get to God is Jesus Christ. And don't bother to look for it on your phone dial because it won't be there. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. I and would none of my reproof. You are in the pages of Proverbs 1. God has told, Oh, where's your numbers of people? Where's your mass? In hell. That's where the mass is. It's in hell. The Bible says that there'll be simple ones. There'll be scorners and mockers. Here you are. I thank you for making the Bible so real in my life. How do you know that the Bible is the Word of God? Let me find Proverbs 1 again. Proverbs chapter 1. How do I know the Bible's the Word of God according to Daytona Beach, Florida? How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners die, delight in their scornings. And fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. 
Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refuse. I stretch out my hand, and no man regarded it. But you have set not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. Proverbs 1, 20 to 23 I read. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 And thou shalt be saved. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you honestly say, according to the Psalms, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For these things have I written unto you, that you may know you have eternal life. You don't even know where that verse is. You don't even know. I realize I quoted two verses at you. Good. How you doing, sir? Try to be here every yeah, every Saturday. No, no, I've had enough with music down here. All right, God bless. You are going to appear before God one day, saved or lost. Judgment. And you're not going to cry before God how great thou art. It's not how great thou art. It's how great Jesus is. And if you hate the preaching of Jesus Christ, I'm going to say of 99% of assurity, you're not saved. You're not of God. You do not have the right spirit in you. If your religion is dead, you probably are too. You're probably on life support for the long suffering of God that you might get saved. It's a long suffering of God. It is the love of God. It is the mercy of God and the grace of God that you're able one more time to hear the gospel. Wouldn't it not be great that if God were to move me somewhere or take me home, that'd be greater. That He would send someone louder and more obnoxious than I am preaching? Or would it be possible if God say one day you're done with them? Move. And you move on with your lives. And you continue to reject Jesus. Rejecting Jesus Christ is God going to reject you. You can't expect the love of God when you reject the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Jesus, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The wages of sin is death. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Behold the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience. I need help on that last one. See, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. You may be a sinner outside of grace, lost, and on your way to hell. That's what Jesus preached. If you haven't read your Bible, man. And with that, with, with all well, don't tell a preacher how to preach because the good news is Jesus Christ suffered. He suffered and died. That's good news. Oh, that's 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 your Good Friday. It's not good for me that he suffered and died, according to the scriptures, and was buried. And arose again the third day. It is not good news that my Savior suffered and died. Yet it was needful. How dare you wicked Catholics call the suffering and death Jesus good Friday. By the way, it wasn't Friday. Learn math. Get out of the public school system math. Three days and three nights from Friday is not Sunday. <laughs> Look at it. As Jonah was in the heart of the earth, I mean, as Jonah was in the whale's belly, and so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days, three nights. Friday, Saturday, oh boy, you got trouble. We got a religion that lies to you, and Satan is a liar, John 8, 44. You must call them fathers. When Jesus said, call no man your father. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's positive. But if you do not have the Son, you shall not see life. But the wrath of God abiding upon him, that's negative, that's Bible, that's John 3.36. You want me to do what Thomas Jefferson did to the Bible. Take scissors and a pen knife to it. I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> I will leave you with the words. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. It's that simple.